I'd like to introduce the band. Went to school here. A good friend of mine, great songwriter, guitarist, plays piano, and many other things. Frequent violator of the Man Act. Mari Muleisen. Good to be back. Who wants to do something? I feel, like, uh, I feel like the Maharishi here, you know, trying to listen to some Indian music. What's happening? Is there a radio broadcast happening in between the... The speakers are giving an interesting account of what's happening on the moon. Getting broadcasts from the Maharishi's home base, somewhere in the Alps. Give me $300, I will take away your mind. <laughs> Give me five hundred dollars and make you crazy as me. <laughs> Went out and bought an Indian phrase book, trying to find out what Maharishi meant. And the only thing I could find out was uh, it meant fraudulent one. <laughs> but he's the one that's got the Learjet, you know. We the ones that's sitting here. <laughs> You know, so I used to play guitar with Mari, and then different things happened. That was the period of time I was going through intense period of character development over the past couple years, getting up at 4.30 in the morning and driving down to Chester, Pennsylvania, where I pick up 15 gear semi double flat super double clutch and E flat tractor trailer van and drive in and out of the quarries and haul a lot of rock and then occasionally they'd give me the big long 40 footer and let me haul concrete pipe, which was great because I'd love, uh, you know, to do it. And then after a while, it does start getting to you. You know, why do I have to get up at 4.30 and everybody else gets up at 8.30 to go to class and go to get their job on time? So I started trying to take it out on people. And I would write stuff on the back of the trailer, not like wash me. You know, that's old. <laughs> write stuff like, I may be slow, but I'm ahead of you. It really tears them up. They go insane. And that only takes you so far, too, because pretty soon your aggravation level builds up. After they start pulling in front of you a couple times, uh, it just doesn't work. And what I used to get a kick out of doing is going down 95, where it's nice and flat, out of Chester and through Delaware. And it might take, oh, eight or ten miles to get the thing up to 75 miles an hour. But the feeling, when you pull up behind a Volkswagen, it's doing 72. You reach up and grab that lanyard. And the lanyard runs the air horns. And they're nice and chrome and sitting up across the top. And you pull down on a lanyard, you get like a... <laughs> it's unbelievable. Because you look down in that rearview mirror in the Volkswagen and you wouldn't believe that the human face can make so many expressions. <laughs> you know, like the first one is, oh my God! One of them. And the second one is like this terrified resignation as they just finally realize they're going to become a hood ornament. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It really is. That and stopping in truck stops. Like truck stops are my favorite place to hang out because each one of them is like a Fellini film. You know, especially when you get into the places where you meet the truckers that are driving from Seattle to Key West twice a week. Like, that's a very long trip. They know it. You know, it's impossible to stay up 80, 90 hours at a time without directional aids. And they get into these things that the truckers call uppers, bennies, cartwheels, co-pilots, second drivers, squirrels, and West Coast turnarounds. The West Coast turnaround, you can take one in New York as you're leaving, drive all the way to San Diego, and turn around and drive right back. <laughs> all the time talking to your windshield. Like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, cut off a broomstick about that long, put one end of it down on a throttle pedal, and kick the other one in against the seat. It holds the pedal down to the floor, gives you extra foot to dance with. You know, when you're listening to WWVA, 
selling 500 live baby chicks for $2.99. And a country and western tablecloth with a picture of Tex Ritter and Loretta Lynn on it. And if you're among the first 150 to send in friends and neighbors, you're going to get a live autographed picture of the Last Supper. <laughs> Just not many of them left anymore. The last time I was in a truck stop, we heard this story about a trucker that had a million miles in. And that's an awful lot of pills. And he must have been really glad that he was done with it. The radio station came down and said, mind if we do an interview with you? And he says, hell no. He says, what's it feel like to have driven a million miles sitting up in that big cab? He said, well, I tell you. He says, it sure has been something. Twenty years of hard driving. He says, and I've seen just about everything. He says, I've jackknifed, blown towers, lost my brakes, got hung up in snow banks. He says, you name it. I said, well, uh, let me just set up a situation so you can tell the people out there how quick your reactions are and how you manage to get in and out of all these situations. Suppose you're driving from uh, L.A. into New York and you hit the first good peak in the Rockies and you see a sign that says, Truckers, two-lane road, real curvy, uh, three-mile downhill run, use low, low gear. And it's like 2.30 in the morning. Your partner's all scrunched up on a seat sleeping. You make it up over the top. About the first half mile down, things are going good. And like you tap the brakes, nothing. Panic. Nothing happens at all. You make it around the first curve, and like that 40-footer just glides around. Things are looking good. Till you see the second curve down there. And there's like a Volkswagen sitting up on a jack. Trucker goes, uh-huh. And coming up the other way, is a fuel oil truck in low, low gear. Says, uh huh. Says, what would you do? Said, well, I'd wake my partner up. He says, you wake your partner up, man. Says, what would you do that for? He says, well, he ain't been driving long, and I know he ain't never seen a wreck like.